He is the Lord of the Rings, the one who would torment Middle-earth for two ages of the world. But long before he would craft his ring, he would serve as the greatest and most trusted lieutenant of Morgoth, assisting him in his conquest and fighting against the mighty heroes of Beleriand. Today on Nerd of the Rings, we cover the life and travels of Sauron during the First Age. In the beginning, Sauron was a Maya known as Myron, serving under Aule, the smith of the Valar. However, Myron would be swayed to join the evil Vala Melkor. Myron had a love of order and a strong distaste for chaos and confusion. This obsession would take over his love for the other beings in Arda, to the point where it becomes his sole focus. So much so that he admires Melkor and his attempts to shape the world as he sees fit. Myron comes to serve Melkor, becoming his most trusted servant. He becomes known as Gorthaur, meaning terrible dread, among the Sindar, and by his more common name, Sauron, meaning the abhorred in Quenya. In the earliest days of Middle-earth, Morgoth has two fortresses, Utumno and Angband. While Morgoth would rule the greatest himself, he gives Sauron command of Angband. After the destruction of the two lamps and the awakening of the elves, the Valar decide to move against Morgoth in the Battle of the Powers. While this would primarily be a siege upon Utumno, the Valar in their victory would also search Angband. Sauron, however, would evade their capture and continue to dwell in Middle-earth, while his master is held captive in Valinor for nearly 3,000 years. We know very little of what Sauron does during these long years, aside from biding his time, awaiting the return of his master. This day would eventually come as the Valar give Morgoth a second chance, which he uses to steal the Silmarils, destroy the two trees, which were the sources of light for the world, and flee to Beleriand. With the two trees destroyed, the Valar create the sun and the moon. As the sun rises for the first time, it marks the awakening of the second children of Iluvatar, men. Morgoth sees this as an opportunity to corrupt these new beings to his will and travels to the east of Middle-earth, leaving Sauron in command of the war between the Dark Forces and the Elves of Beleriand. In the first 455 years of the First Age, Morgoth would only have fairly small victories against the Elves, with the Free Peoples keeping the Dark Lord in check for the most part. In 455, however, Morgoth launches the Dagor Bragalach, the Battle of Sudden Flame, which devastates the plains of Unfauglith, the realm of Dorthonion, and would mark the beginning of Morgoth's gradual march toward domination. Upon seeing the devastation across the plain, King Fingolfin rides to Angband to challenge Morgoth to single combat. Despite putting up a remarkable fight, Fingolfin is crushed by the Dark Lord. The death of the High King of the Noldor and the scorching of the plains opens the door for Sauron to attack the island of Tol Sirion. We are told that at Sauron's coming, absolute fear falls upon Orodreth and the defenders of Tol Sirion. The realm falls to Sauron and he takes control of the great tower of Minas Tirith in the year 457. Tol Sirion is now ruled by Sauron and is renamed Tolin Gauroth, the Isle of Werewolves. Werewolves, while only getting a brief mention in the Third Age by Gandalf, play a much bigger role in the First Age. Not only is Sauron their master, but he is also their creator. These monstrous creatures were bred from the wolves of Morgoth. Sauron would then imprison evil spirits within the bodies, thus creating the monstrous werewolves. At times, Sauron also takes on the form of a wolf himself, in addition to other forms which we'll cover later. After the Dagor Bragolach, Beren, his father Barahir, and a group of men would operate as outlaws in their former lands of Dorthonion. Hearing of the actions of these men, Morgoth orders Sauron to wipe them out. Sauron's orcs managed to capture one of these outlaws named Gorlim after he saw what he thought was his wife, who had been missing since the Bragolach. And taking him to their camp, they tormented him, 
seeking to learn the hidings of Barahir and all his ways. But nothing would Gorlam tell. Then they promised him that he should be released and restored to Ailinil if he would yield. And being at last worn with pain and yearning for his wife, he faltered. Then straight away they brought him into the dreadful presence of Sauron. And Sauron said, I hear now that thou wouldst barter with me. What is thy price? And Gorlam answered that he should find Ailinel again, and with her be set free. For he thought Ailinel also had been made captive. Then Sauron smiled, saying, That is a small price for so great a treachery. So shall it surely be. Say on. Now Gorlam would have drawn back, but daunted by the eyes of Sauron, he told at last all that he would know. Then Sauron laughed, and he mocked Gorlam, and revealed to him that he had only seen a phantom devised by wizardry to entrap him, for Ailinel was dead. Nonetheless, I will grant thy prayer, said Sauron, and thou shalt go to Ailinel and be set free of my service. Then he put him cruelly to death. In 460, Sauron sends a force of orcs to the outlaw's hideout of Tarn Elwin, where all are killed except Baron. Baron continues to operate in the area as a lone outlaw, achieving great deeds against the forces of the Dark Lord. In response, Morgoth sets a high price on Baron's head leading Sauron to command a great army of werewolves and fell beasts to search for Baron. This forces Baron to flee south, where he would meet Luthien and be tasked by her father Thingol to steal a Silmaril from Morgoth's crown. This quest, undertaken in 465, would bring Baron, Galadriel's brother Finrod, and a group of ten elves to attempt the passage to the north. Finrod uses his magic to disguise the group as orcs, in an effort to pass by Sauron's isle unnoticed. However, Sauron had ordered all who passed to report to him. When he notices this band of orcs passing without reporting, they are captured and brought before him. There, Finrod and Sauron fight in songs of power, and while both possess great strength, Sauron is more powerful. He strips them of their orc disguises, but cannot determine who they are or what their purpose is. When they refuse to disclose any of this information, Sauron throws all twelve into a dark pit. One by one, they are devoured by a werewolf. Even as they are consumed one by one, Baron and the elves will not betray one another. Finally, Finrod and Baron are the only two who remain. As the werewolf goes to attack Baron, Finrod fights the werewolf and using every bit of his power left to him, kills it. Finrod soon dies of his wounds from the battle. In this moment, Luthien comes to the bridge of Tolin Gauroth and begins to sing. Sauron sees her from his tower of Minas Tirith and knows her to be the daughter of Melian and Thingol. Rather than kill her, he wishes to capture her so that he may deliver her to Morgoth. He sends werewolf after werewolf to the bridge, but they are each killed in turn by Luthien's companion. Huon the Hound. Finally, Sauron sends Draugluin, the great father of the werewolves. After a fierce battle with the Hound, Draugluin flees, telling Sauron of Huon before he dies. Sauron sends no more servants. He will take this battle himself. He takes the form of a werewolf, said to be the greatest the world had ever seen and comes to the bridge to fight the Hound of Valinor. So great was the terror of his approach that even Huon momentarily recoils from his might. Sauron leaps at Luthien. She draws her magic veil over his eyes, blinding him and afflicting him with fatigue. Huon then jumps upon Sauron and the two fight their brutal fight. It is said Luthien is left weak and very nearly unconscious from the force of Sauron's malice alone. While Sauron fights fiercely, he cannot defeat the Hound. Eventually, Huon traps Sauron within his jaws. In an attempt to escape, Sauron takes the form of a serpent, 
Still, the hound holds him captive. Finally, he returns to his normal form. Here, Sauron is faced with a choice. As an immortal spirit, he can abandon his physical form. But as we see in later ages, it takes a long time for him to regain it. Instead, he yields control of the Isle to Luthien in exchange for his release. Now free, he takes the form of a vampire, fleeing to Tarnufuin, where he fills the forest with horror. 80 years later, in 545, the host of the West, led by the Maya Eonwe, comes to Beleriand in an effort to overthrow Morgoth. What follows is the 40-year War of Wrath, an unimaginable battle with uncountable combatants and devastation throughout the lands of Beleriand. In the end, Angband is destroyed. Morgoth is once again captured, bound in chains, and his feet are hewn from under him. Sauron, who likely took part in the battle, knows his master is utterly defeated. He takes on a fair form and repents of his evil deeds to Aonwe. Aonwe orders Sauron to return to Valinor, where he may repent to Manwe and receive judgment. However, Sauron is unwilling to endure such humiliation. Instead, he flees to the lands of Middle-earth, where he would hide, biding his time. With his master banished to the void, the time has come for a new Dark Lord. One that would use all his cunning and his craftsmanship to bend Middle-earth to his will. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe. And be sure to check out my video on Sauron in the Second Age, already live here on the channel. As always, a huge thank you to my Patreon supporters who make this channel possible, including Tom DeBombadil19, Gail Elizabeth, Jim Limber Davis, Jason Batchelor, Sky Carcass, Salim Rahman, Smorzerk, Zetrok, Gimilkad, Debbie, Grand Strategy Nerd, Chief40123, Mid Earth Wellness, and The Dark Haired One. Thanks so much for watching and subscribing, and we'll see you next time on Nerd of the Rings.